we, so there are so many people that are suffering, and it's okay to suffer. It's not taboo to suffer, guys. I think that's a part of the shame. That's a part of the problem, the part, part of the reason why Christians are so confused by suffering because we think that as Christians we shouldn't have to suffer. It's not wrong to suffer. It's actually a part of the plan of God to suffer. But it's how do you suffer that makes the difference. It's how do you suffer. We're so confounded and we're confused. Why aren't I healed? Why aren't I set free? Why am I suffering? Why am I going through these trials and tribulations? Why don't I have peace? Why don't I have joy? Where is it? God's supposed to heal me. He is, he, he's able to do all things. Why isn't he healing me? Why isn't he setting me free? And then we start to, we're looking so closely at the, at the things that are wrong in our life that we, we cannot see the goodness and grace and glory of Jesus Christ in the midst of our suffering. The greatest tool that was ever created by God to magnify his glory, his goodness, his grace, and his mercy is suffering. It's suffering. It was the suffering of Jesus Christ. The lamb that was slain is how he's referred to. The lamb that was slain, the word slain literally means slaughtered. Then I looked again and I heard the voices of thousands and millions of angels around the throne and of the living beings and of the elders. And they sang in a mighty chorus, worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then I heard every creature in, every, in heaven and every creature on earth and under the earth and in the sea. And they sang, blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and the lamb forever and ever. For the four living beings said, amen, and the 24 elders fell down and worshiped the lamb. The, worship, the, who, the lamb who? The lamb that was slaughtered, the lamb that was slain. The, the angels around the throne of God, these angels, the, the angels, every living human being, what, was, what they were doing is they were completely obsessed and focused on the slaughter of the lamb, the suffering of the lamb of Jesus Christ, because it was that suffering that unlocked the suffering of the people. It was that suffering, the suffering of the lamb that unlocked the, the bondage of every man, every tribe, every tongue, so that they could bow and worship. That they could bow and worship the one true God. They were, they were completely obsessed with the slaughter of the, of the lamb. But see, that's where we go wrong. We're not obsessed with the slaughter of the lamb. We're not obsessed. We're talking about being anchored into the cross of Jesus Christ. We're not anchored, guys. We have to be obsessed with the slaughter of the lamb. We have to be obsessed with the suffering of the lamb. We are obsessed instead with our own suffering so many times that the key to our suffering is the suffering of the lamb. Guys, we are born again, blood-bought, born again. We are supposed to be blood-obsessed believers. We are supposed to be obsessing and suffering, yes, but in the suffering of God, of God, the suffering of Jesus, not in our own suffering. We have to deal with it. We have to deal with it. We have to be able to look at it, but we have to look at it in, in relevance to the suffering of the Lamb. That's the key to the body of Christ. It's the key to the body of Christ. It's the key to your suffering is the suffering of the Lamb. We've got to get this. We've got to get this so that we can do what? We can be made kings in the earth the way that God ordained for us to be. Your suffering does not have to dictate your future in the way that it's designed to dictate, manipulate, and destroy your future. You're still going to suffer. Don't look at it as something odd is happening to you. Look when we as Christians get the revelation that we need, that the suffering of Jesus Christ is what is supposed to be the well that we draw from in our own suffering, if you can rest with the revelation of the suffering of Jesus Christ, you can rest through your suffering. So that means when you're suffering, you need to stop. Just stop for a minute, take a deep breath, and get your eyes off of your own suffering and get them on to the suffering of Jesus Christ and look deep to what his suffering has accomplished for you in your suffering so that your suffering can now be a tool in the hand of a mighty God that can magnify, use your suffering to magnify and glorify the goodness, grace, and mercy of God Almighty in this world. Long before the foundations of the earth and before you were ever created, Jesus Christ, God, God Almighty sent his son to literally suffer to answer for your suffering so you don't have to suffer. Now suffer, you're going to experience. You're going to experience, but you don't have to suffer in your soul. You know what I mean? The downcast, the depression, the anxiety, the addiction, the 
all of that stuff, all those maladies that, that overtake our soul because we're suffering. No, you can suffer with victory.